Hello, fans of swearing. Um, this will be about swearing. I am going to say some swear words, uh, a lot of swear words, and uh, if you uh, think you're going to be offended by that, just get the hell out of here right now. Uh, we've recorded over 10,000 people swearing in public. Uh, we've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of, of people uh, to figure out what we know about swearing. So in, uh, in 10 minutes or so, I'm going to cover a lot of what I've done in 40 years. So this will be not just a folk knowledge of swearing, it will be a sort of how um, psychologists or scientists approach swearing. So the first question, think about why do, why do swear words exist? And uh, well, let's define what swear words. Swear words are offensive emotional language, and most of this is, is about communicating emotions. And we can think of these, people call these taboo words, curse words, scatology, profanity, obscenity, indecency, name calling, hate speech, et ethnic racial slurs, it's, it's all of these. Where do they come from? They come from uh, taboos. Taboos are social sanctions uh, or inhibitions uh, that, that are the result of learning. And these taboos are ancient. They go back to biblical times. Uh, they're in the Koran about things you can do and things you can say, what, you, what you're allowed to eat, what you're not allowed to eat. So these taboos are ancient, and, and they form uh, part of why we have restrictions on profanity and blasphemy. So these um, taboos are reinforced by what I call institutions of power, and these are authorities. So these are this, this would be religion, it would be courts, it would be people who control the media, um, it would be your educators, and closer to home, it would be your parents and your caregivers. So your caregivers take these words that are, have been tabooed uh, publicly, and they make sure you don't say them uh, by doing things like giving you verbal reprimands, or one of my favorites is uh, soaping out your mouth with soap. Um, uh, my lab was the first one to study that, and we found out that usually mom does this, and it usually takes place in the bathroom. Um, you know, you have a dirty mouth, so we have to clean it out with soap. No one, so no one is born with the knowledge of swear words that we acquire these as uh, conventions, and uh, we're socialized into what I would call a folk knowledge of, of how to use this language and where to use it and, and not use it. Um, so it takes, it takes a while to figure out what, what you can say and what you can't say and where you can say it. So, you know, you can think of a seven-year-old uh, boys use the word fag a, a, a lot, but they don't realize how offensive it, it is to <clears throat> other people until they get a little bit older. Um, so just think about these are, these, nobody's born with these words. We're, we're pretty much told and taught these words. Uh, what, so you think about what words are swear words. And the semantics around swearing, uh, are, the semantics are, are categories are limited. Uh, primarily sex and religion uh, form, the, form most of these, but there are other categories. So you, you all know these sexual references, uh, blow job, pussy, dick, cunt, you know, everybody knows these kinds of words. Uh, religious words are, are categorized as profanity and blasphemy. Profanity is just a secular or indifference towards religion. Blasphemy is an attack on religion. So these are saying words like damn, God damn, Jesus Christ, uh, sort of when you're upset or, or frustrated. Uh, another category is what I call uh, scatology or scatological references. And scatos means dung, so this is about references to caca, poop, turds, shit, uh, disgusting things that come out of your body are scatological references. I like the term for that effluvia. Those are the things that come out of your body. Uh, we also, every culture has animal names that they use as insults, so things like uh, ass, bitch, pig. These are usually, um, these are usually words uh, about animals that we know um, a lot about, uh, so we don't insult people by saying, oh, you marmot or you toucan, uh, because we don't, you know, we don't use those as insults. Um, then we've got other, uh, another category that's problematic is what I would call ethnic, racial, gender slurs. 
Uh, things like fag, rug muncher, uh, spick, dago, those are ethnic uh, and gender insults. If you don't know what any of the words I'm saying, if you don't know those or your parents don't know them, you can look them up on Urban Dictionary. Uh, I'm sure it's a, it's a good source for slang. Uh, there are also references, other types of uh, put-downs or insults are related to perceived, not doesn't have to be real, but perceived psychological uh, physical or social differences. Uh, so there are a lot of, in psychology, there are a lot of things that have to do with mental differences. So retard, wimp, moron, idiot, um, lard ass would be the, in that category. Then we also uh, have swear words that I would call ancestral allusions. And these are things like son of a bitch, bastard, motherfucker. Uh, if you if we look at Asian languages, uh, they have terms like shit, grandma, and ant fucker. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't have ant fucker, uh, fucker, uncle fucker words like that. But uh, it might be interesting to think about why we don't have those words when other cultures do. And then the last category is what I would call slang, sub substandard slang. Uh, these are words like puke or on the rag. Uh, College students develop a lot of different kinds of uh, slang, as do other groups and people that work with technology. So we have military slang like clusterfuck, or we have uh, terms like, uh, if you worked in a restaurant, uh, a term like tit run, which I'm not going to tell you what that means. You can look it up uh, unless you ask me during the Q&A period. Uh, the, uh, whether what I've said is offensive or not uh, really is entirely contextually determined. Uh, some things that you can say in private with each other would be uh, a lot of what I'm saying here. Um, I don't think I would say if I was stopped by the state troopers or I wouldn't say at a wedding or at a funeral. Um, but I, since this is a scientific uh, expose of this kind of language, I, I think I'm, uh, it's okay for me to give you examples of these. Third, uh, third question, what motivates people to, to use taboo, taboo words? And so why, why do they use them? I think, about, think about swearing like using the horn on your car. Uh, you can use that horn on your car for a lot of reasons. You can be happy. You can be angry. You can be frustrated. Uh, you can honk if you're horny. You can honk if you love Jesus. There's a lot of ways you can use that horn. And swearing is like that. It fulfills a lot of different uh, functions. When we, when we look at uh, the motivation for why people use this kind of language, it, ma it makes us think about uh, control over our language. And there's a, there's a form of swearing like epithets uh, that are very spontaneous. Uh, and you, if you do this, if you have the habit of doing this, um, you seem like you have little control over it. They're kind of spontaneous. Um, beyond that, then, we, you have what I would call strategic swearing. And that is where you're thinking about what you're going to say, a dirty joke or an insult you're going to give to uh, say to someone. And these could be, these strategic uses could be positive, they could be negative, or they could be inconsequential in terms of their impact on other people. Of the 10,000 or so people that we've uh, recorded in public swearing, we've never seen this turn into uh, like physical violence. It's, it seems to be more of this type of uh, a reactionary or inconsequential swearing. Uh, there are also people can use these words uh, literally or denotatively, like uh, we fucked last night. Uh, but most of the use of this language is connotative. It's, it's emotional. And so we get these offensive emotional outbursts. Uh, these epithets uh, that we talked about being spontaneous, these um, seem to mainly serve uh, our own emotional expression like uh, frustration or anger. Um, Things it's similar to saying "ouch" uh, or, or making grunts, you know, when you uh, expend a lot of effort or frustration. I, uh, I I play ice hockey and golf, and I I don't think I could play either of those without swearing. I still I don't know if golf was invented for swearing or swearing was invented for golf. But uh, the worse I play, the worse the, the swearing gets. Um, I just played ice hockey today at noon, and uh, at my age, I miss a lot of passes, and uh, I'm always saying damn and shit and hell to myself. I don't swear at other people. It's mainly my own uh, 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 self-deprecation uh, with that kind of language. 
<clears throat> there's also, as, as I mentioned before, there's also insulting and name calling that we uh, use for um, other people, calling somebody an asshole or a bitch or a tool or an ass kisser. Those are good examples of uh, insults. And then I think one an ancient version of swearing is in the form of cursing. And cursing is wishing harm on other people. Uh, it stems from what a pretty primitive belief that uh, by saying something, it will actually that will actually happen to the person. Uh, so the curse, uh, it's kind of like a hex or voodoo. You know, it's gonna it's gonna hurt them physically in some way. But we realize these today in terms of expressions like "go to hell," uh, "fuck you," "eat shit and die." I I like that "eat shit and die" is really two, right? It's really two curses because uh, you have to do two. And can I just do one? Do I have to do? Do I have to eat shit and die? Can I just do one of those things? Um, what is rarely discussed uh, when this topic comes up is the positive aspects of swearing, because the the major script of this in the media is that. Cursing is a bad thing. You shouldn't do it. Kind of from a moral perspective, uh, this is a bad thing to do. These are bad words. Bad people say these. You know, this is this is harmful speech. And so there certainly is a lot of that. But if but you shouldn't think of that swearing exclusively as that because there are a lot of social outcomes that are positive, like using taboo words in jokes, uh, in humor. You know, think about we have a we have a robust comedy industry in America where people pay lots of money to listen to comedians say words like I'm saying here. And, you know, you laugh yourself silly till you, uh, you know, your sides hurt uh, hearing this kind of language. And I would say, you know, that's positive. Uh, the, we also use this kind of language in social commentaries, in, in sex talk, in storytelling, uh, in, in group slang, self-deprecation as a way to, you know, ingratiate ourselves with other people. If you think about if you think about some of the sex words I said earlier, we re we really have Americans have really a difficult time talking about sex. We have one of the poorest sex education uh, uh, businesses in, in the industrialized world, and you know if you can't use slang because it's offensive, uh, you're, we're really quite handicapped because people are uncomfortable using words like. Um, Intercourse, penis, vagina. You know, can can you see? You, there's a couple like, oh dear, uh, dinner was good. Would you like to go upstairs and fornicate? Uh, oh yes, I'd like to fondle your penis. You know, people don't talk like that. They use sexual slang, and uh, you know, it, and the, and so that it, we're really kind of handicapped when it, when it comes to sex, we're talking about sex. Uh, I once gave a lecture down in Georgia, and a, a middle-aged guy came up to me afterward, and he said he had never heard anyone pronounce the word clitoris. And uh, I, I felt kind of sorry for him, and I, I, I hoped he had at least seen one in his lifetime. Um, I think you should think of you should think of swear words. The utility, what I call the utility, is like a box of tools. You know, there's hundreds of these words that you can use. Uh, for a variety of um, uh, situations. And so that's, I think about, that's why these words have survived. A word like fuck is several hundred years old, as, as are these Anglo, what we call Anglo-Saxon four-letter words. These are hundreds of years old. And language is very efficient. What is, what is not useful in language becomes obsolete. That happens to slang um, all the time. Words come in and out of fashion. but. They, these words must have survived for uh, a reason. And the reason they've survived is because they communicate emotions, intense and deep emotions, more effectively and more efficiently than any other kind of language. Fourth point, how often do we say swear words and who says them? Uh, swear words are, they're, they're persistent. They are learned early. As, as soon as kids start to talk, and they persist into old age, into senility, they survive dementia, they survive Alzheimer's disease. We know this because we've studied the elderly in nursing homes. And um, old, these old people don't just, uh, they seem to start mysteriously swearing, but they've known that language all along. It's just that 
through uh, brain dysfunction or lack of uh, executive control. This, what they, you know, there's grandma, and, and people will say, ah, we never heard grandma swear like that. Now she's in there swearing like a sailor. Well, she didn't learn those words in the nursing home. She's had those words uh, since she was a kid, and for whatever reasons now they're coming out. But, you know, most of the language we hear from uh, 80, 90-year-olds now are kind of profanities, damn, God damn, Jesus Christ. Our field studies of swearing show that people swear at the rate of uh, less than 1% of the language they use per day. Um, and this, if, you, if you're thinking about, well, what does that mean? It means if you're using about 10, 15,000 words a day, you're swearing at the rate of about uh, 80 or 90 swear words a day. Uh, but in that study, uh, there was a range from zero. Some people don't say any swear words. And the, high, the highest recorded persons used 350 swear words in one day, which, which is, that's a lot of swearing. Um, the, these things occur at about the same, same rate in, uh, in uh, electronic media, in, in uh, MySpace, in chat rooms, at a little less than 1% uh, for the total language. Who uses these? There have been studies, demographics of uh, soldiers and police and delinquents and drug, uh, drug users and prostitutes and high school students and college students and psychiatric patients. I, I would pretty much say this cuts through every demographic in America um, and, uh, and all age ranges, although we tend to find more swearing in the lower, if you look at social economic rank, you tend to find more of it in the lower um, uh, in the lower ranks. Uh, as a psychologist, we look at the personality of people that use swear words, and we tend to see these are people that um, have that type A um, hostility. Uh, they're aggressive. They are extroverted. Um, sometimes you see it with people who are neurotic. On the other end, you people that have high sex anxiety, high religiosity, uh, people that are highly agreeable or conscientious tend to be the kinds of people who uh, are reluctant to use swear words. Uh, finish up here with uh, what are the most frequently used taboo words. Americans aren't really creative of all the hundreds of words we could use. We tend to use a handful of words over and over. And we, we've recorded in public about the use of about 70 swear words. But 10 words account for 80% um, of the swearing. And they are in order of frequency. Fuck, shit, hell, damn, goddamn, Jesus Christ, ass, oh my God, bitch, and sucks. One more time if you didn't get that. Fuck, shit, hell, damn, goddamn, Jesus Christ, ass, oh my God, bitch, and sucks. Now you wonder, oh my God, why is oh my God in there? Because it's a, it's a mild mildly offensive, but probably not offensive to a lot of people. But you know what? Almost a hundred years ago, you couldn't say that um, on radio, and you couldn't put it in film. Uh, so uh, that there's, there's one of the words that um, has um, it decreased in its offensiveness over time. In a lot of the studies we've done since the 1980s, two words, fuck and shit, will account for anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of the swearing we pick up in public. So we're, we're kind of uh, limited in the, uh, in the vocabulary that we use. And if you just listen to people swearing around you, you'll, you'll pick up on that. There are age and gender differences. Uh, men and women swear at about the same rate now. That was different than 30 years ago when you usually heard more men swearing in public than women. Uh, men tend to use more offensive words more often than women do. Um, women use um, two words that women use a lot more than, than men are, uh, oh my God and, and bitch. Um, although we've, we recorded um, in, a, in a restaurant, we put a, a voice activated tape recorder in a, in a women's restroom one time. And uh, I don't think I've heard, heard the words bastard and son of a bitch as much as we recorded in a, in a women's restroom in a, in a bar. So I'm going to stop here.